part of building a successful web application is to ensure that it supports multiple devices and browsers. It is the latter that we're going to focus on here. Welcome to Automate Now, I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. And let's just say that we had this scenario in which we go to this website, automenow.io, and then we want to perform a validation to make sure that this logo shows up on the screen. And we want to test this scenario on multiple browsers. Let's go to the code. And this is the test right here. We're just performing an assertion to make sure that the logo is displayed on the screen. However, the main issue with this test is that it only runs in one browser, and that is Chrome. You can see here that this class extends base test class. I'm going to control click on this class, I have defined the browser that I want to test in a properties file, this one right here, config.properties. And as you can see, it says Chrome. If I want to test a different browser, I type in a different browser name. Even though this file can get the job done for running your test on multiple browsers, it is not the ideal solution. What I'm going to do is to show you a better way and make sure to make it to the end of the video to watch some tips and tricks that I'm going to give you. So we're going to be using testng for this. Let me take you to this testng.xml file. We're going to be using this file to do cross-browser testing. If you would like to learn how to set up this file, please make sure to click the video card above. Let's go ahead and start working with this test suite here. I'm going to add a couple of tests here. My first test here is going to run my test methods on the Chrome browser. Then I'm going to have another test that is going to run the same test on the Firefox browser. So here let's say test, let's give it a name of Chrome tests. Then we're going to add our test class we're going to say classes, and then class. The name of our class is going to be io.automatenow.tests.test homepage. Because this is where our test is, right here in this test homepage class. Let me go ahead and copy this right here and paste it over here. This one is going to be called Firefox. And it's going to be the same tests. I also want this test to run in parallel. So I'm going to add an attribute over here. I'm going to say parallel tests. This is going to make sure that this test right here and this test right here run in parallel. You'll notice that we have marked Chrome tests and Firefox tests, but this is not enough. We need to add one more thing and that is parameters. So to each test, we need to add one more thing, which is parameter. So we need to specify a browser parameter. Let's go over here. We're going to say parameter the name of it is going to be browser. And in this case, the value is going to be Chrome. Let me go ahead and copy this right here and bring it down to this other test. But instead of Chrome, I'm going to say Firefox. So we've said here that this test class should run under the Chrome browser. And this test class should also run under this other browser. And before I proceed, I need to mention something that is very important. If you're running this test locally, meaning on your computer, you need to make sure that any browsers that you specify on this file have been installed on your computer. Since I already have Chrome and Firefox installed, I can move on. So let me go back to the test over here. There's one additional step that we need to do, and that is to make sure that our test is receiving the parameter that we specified on the testng.xml file. In this framework that I've set up here, I use a base test class. So let me go to this class right here, control click on here, and notice that I have a before method. This before method is the one that is in charge of launching my browser. I have this method here called go to home page. Since this method is the one that launches the browser, it needs to know which browser it needs to launch. So I'm going to add a new annotation here. So I'm going to say add parameters. And the parameter that we're going to add is the one that we specified in testng.xml. Let's go back over here. This is the parameter name browser. So I'm just going to copy this right here and paste it over here. You can also use braces around this right here, like so. But that is mainly used when you have multiple parameters. In my case, it is not really necessary. Then we're going to go to the setup method here, and we're going to say string browser. This parameter here is the one that is going to receive the browser information, that same information that we specified in the testng.xml file. Now we need to pass this information to this method over here, the go to home page method. So let me go ahead and add that over here. I'm going to say browser. Right now it's throwing an error because I don't have a method that accepts a browser parameter. So I'm going to control click here and I'm going to add a parameter here. I'm going to say string browser. And notice that I have a few methods here. One is loading this properties file, which is this file over here. 
and then we have this open browser method. This is the one that is launching the browser. Before I pass in the parameter to this method, let me go to that method right now. Let me control click this. And notice that he has a switch statement right here. And he takes in this variable called browser. That is because I have a variable called browser that is reading this properties file over here, this information. However, I want to get rid of that. So let me go up here and remove that reference. This is the browser over here. So I'm going to comment this out. And let me go up here. Again, I have to comment this out. Now if I scroll back down, there is no reference for this variable. And that is what we need. Because now we want to read the browser information from the testng.xml file. So over here, I'm going to say string browser. Then I'm going to go back over here. And now I'm going to pass in the parameter to this open browser method. So let me grab this right here and paste it over here. So I hope you're following so far. So this is what is going to happen. When we pass in Chrome, this Chrome browser is going to launch. And if we pass in Firefox, then that browser is going to launch. And that is all we need to do to run our tests on multiple browsers. Now let's do a quick review. Let me go back to testng.xml. So here we specified the browser name. This Chrome and Firefox browser information is going to get passed to this method over here, the before method, via the browser parameter. We're then passing this parameter to this method over here. If you look at this method over here, we have another method called open browser. And this method launches the browser with the information that we got from the testng.xml file. It is now time to run our test to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go to this testng.xml file. Then I'm going to right click this file and select run. These tests are going to run in parallel. So we're going to see two browser windows, one for Chrome and one for Firefox. So this is Firefox over here and Chrome. I'm going to put them side by side over here. We can see over here that our Chrome and Firefox tests passed. Before I go, I want to show you one cool little trick. Let's just say that you have a default browser that you always test on. Let me show you how you can configure a default browser. I'm going to go to the before method again. And right here, we have specified the browser information. I'm going to add one more thing here. I'm going to say add optional. Then I'm going to specify my default browser. In this case, I'm going to say Chrome. What this is saying here is that we expect a parameter called browser. However, if you don't get a browser information, then use this default browser over here. So let me go back to the testng file. And where I specify this parameter information, I'm just going to comment it out. Since I specified that Chrome is my default browser, this test should still run on Chrome. And to prove my point, I'm going to rerun this suite. Here I have Chrome and Firefox. Would you like to learn my top three tips on parallel testing? If so, click the video on the screen. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, please leave any comments or questions you may have in the section below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. I'll see you guys in the next video.